Live. Okay. Hey, you right. Let me sit. Uh, hang on. Let me let me get my audio checked real quick. Throw this into moderator view. It is not 14 seconds ago. Come on, Twitch. You're better than this. I'm live. You know I'm live. You can see that I'm live. Twitch, buddy. All right, there we go. I'm live. We're live. Everybody's live. Okay. Mod you. Ready? Um, get my mute button. Nope. Or thumbs up. Okay. I'm good. Uh, 247. Okay, you ready? Yep. Okay. Three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 247 of the Security Podcast here on the In30 Network. My name is Hayam, and I'm on this side, and Tom should be on that side, just like normal. And Tom's right there. He's right there. And again, it's one of those lull in august it's right before defcon and black hat and we're going to talk about defcon and black hat in a minute let's just get to the little bit of news that we do have there's not that much but while we're here we might as well talk to you about it uh the first one is we got some updates about twitter's hack um basically three individuals from florida were so we we spoke about this it was socially engineered they got some Twitter, uh, one of the staff at Twitter, one of the engineers, they got them to do whatever, and and you saw what happened. They only made, I think they only made $100,000. It, it was honestly way less money than they could have made than, you know, comparatively selling out to like a, a nation state actor or somebody else who really wanted access to those accounts. So, um yeah, I mean, it, there certainly damage done, but not as much as could have been done. I think we got off easy on this one. So, a friend of mine who is not into security at all, he plays uh, some shady at some shady poker sites, and he goes, he's trying to cash out, and he had to make a Bitcoin wallet, and he said, "This is this is hell on earth to make a Bitcoin wallet. It's just so difficult." So. If you're tr- so, if you want to praise and get double, think about what it takes to actually create a Bitcoin wallet. And he asked me questions like, "How come? Why is the UI so bad? Or why can't somebody automate this?" And I said, "Because of the malware involved, you have to try everything and and make sure it works. And if you do one thing wrong, it's people's money that you're dealing with." So he kept on saying, well, make it prettier. And I go, no, that's what it is. If you want to fake it, use use one of the, the wallet managers. But that's really it. And it was, no one's going to use this. And he's correct. It's not like this big thing. So people are just buying on specula- uh, speculation and, and going from there. With that said, Bitcoin has been going up. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's an inflationary currency. I know we don't do a lot with... Um cryptocurrencies here but it's it's interesting now the the just the act of making a bitcoin wallet or something usable is really really trivial at least from from just uh how do i make a, a simple bitcoin wallet address that can accept currency and frankly it's generating a key pair that's it that's all you gotta do generate a key pair you're done you're done. That's like I'm abbreviating a lot of steps there, but the thing that makes it hard is that you know there's a lot of okay. Well, now we got to back up this. We got to put some redundancy around this and protection around here and encrypt this and passwords around this thing and then make sure it's not abused in this way. But like honestly, just the wallet part of getting an address to send coins to that's really really trivial. Doing it safely not so trivial. Devil's always in the details. And that was the problem. Like I had to explain to him and we spoke about this. There's actual malware that will live on your computer that just scans for Bitcoin wallet addresses. Yep. So it does literally nothing else. But if you, it just checks your clipboard. If it sees a big, what looks like a Bitcoin wallet address, it will replace it with their own. Imagine that you're trying to buy something and 
it's like, but you gave it to me. Here it is. And and later on you find out it's wrong and the money is now gone. So so just little things like this that, that my friend had no idea about. And I don't blame him. It's not his fault for not knowing about it. But it's one of those things that that you know what? This is another of the reasons we tell you Bitcoin is just not worth it for right now. What are you trying to do with it? It's a great thought experiment. Uh, I wish it was easier to use, but it's it's clearly not. And you can see that there's a lot of hacks on it because guess what? It's all about the money. Yeah, it's I from a pure technology standpoint, I love Bitcoin. Uh, it is it is a really cool thing. It is innovative. It is it's literally world changing. Um, you know, around the, the social aspects, the economic aspects, the, the usability aspects of Bitcoin. Yeah, it leaves a whole lot to be desired. Um, it's kind of interesting. And I, I don't know. I mean, Bitcoin's always going to be, you know, one of the bigger coins. And I'm going to eat those words later. Um, but I, I find it interesting what other coins are trying to do to kind of alleviate these concerns around UI, security, power usage, all that stuff. Um, and you know where it goes, uh, it's anybody's guess. So, I just want to say that you and I both have one hundred and fifty-one dollars and sixty-four cents of Stellar. Oh right, I forgot that Stellar even existed. That's the other thing about these coins is that unless you're like actively in this world, it could just go away. Now we might want to sell that before Keybase rolls down their operations because uh, you know they got bought by Zoom. So. Who knows what's going to happen to that uh, that cryptocurrency? Um, we'll see. Hey, it, at the very least, it could probably buy me a pizza. I I mean, it did go up by twenty bucks in the last two weeks. So it's just like a seller from its outset. And I think we even said this when we were talking about the rollout for Keybase. It just seems like such a Ponzi scheme. Like there is something so incredibly shady about that. And I get that. Like. The, the Stellar, like the, the group that owns Stellar Coin, like did a whole lot to fund Keybase and that's why they rolled it in. Like, oh no, people are going to love this. Nah, it's it's really there just to pump up the price uh, so you can make a hasty retreat. So, yeah. There's no I'm, cash I'm, out option. That That's my problem. Well, it's like any cryptocurrency, right? Like you can move it to another wallet and then you can go to one of the, the altcoin exchanges and say, okay, I'll give you this much you know, stellar coin for this much Bitcoin and then go sell the Bitcoin on a real exchange. But uh, honestly, it's it's a whole lot of work. And uh, I mean, it's, you know, cash is cash. So if you want, if you've got it laying around, might as well do the transaction, uh, but pay your taxes. There are... Two government entities, and this is not legal advice at all. There are two government entities that you do not get on the bad side of. Number one, Secret Service. Don't. They will literally end you. Number two, the IRS. Those are the two government entities yes. I am actually afraid of. Everyone else is generally incompetent and bad at their jobs, but the Secret Service and the IRS, no. Do not mess with those people. They can destroy your lives so easily. I, I will add, and I don't know if it's zero or number three, but Mossad. You do not get on the Mossad's bad well, side. Yeah, I, I, but, I should say U.S. government entities. Yeah. Um, however, yes, uh, you have to notice Trump's tax returns not released. That's because the IRS has it under lock and key. They solved that problem yeah. of security. Everything else has been leaked. Uh, let's see. Secret Service, he still doesn't have coronavirus. At least we don't know. So that's not that Secret Service doing its job. Everyone else, the FBI, everything <laughs> else. Yes, you do not you do not mess with those two government entities. Anyway, like, like the problem is that we're gonna say I should sell my stellar now, take the hundred and fifty one dollars, pay my taxes, and then watch next week. Gold hit two thousand dollars today. It's uh, all time, all time, all time high. So I don't know. Maybe it's worth keeping it. Maybe that will go up. Just like the tulips. I, you know, I gotta say though, like if you're really banking on Stellar Coin, if you wanna keep that, if you don't want it to disappear one day, don't keep it in the Keybase wallets. Keybase, <laughs> Keybase is a dead man walking at this point. At yeah. any point in time, Keybase could just say, nope, that's it. We're shutting down the application. It's gone. And then where's your Stellar Coin, right? Like they could literally just pack up and walk away. I don't think they would do that. They don't seem like the, the kind of people that would just pack up and walk away um but 
it is probably a good idea to move that to a wallet that you control on your own terms, on your own systems. Do your backups, keep it encrypted. With that said, Garmin, Garmin got hacked with ran or got infiltrated with ransomware, and they did pay. They got the decrypting decryption key, and I think they wanted ten million dollars, and I think they paid, or they did pay. I think I think it was ten million dollars. Yeah, it was it was a whole lot of money, and it's. I, I, I understand why companies pay, right? If you're dead in the water, if you've got nothing else, if you, you know, you, you go to your backup services and you're like, oh no, they haven't been running for 10 years. We just honestly forgot about it. Then yeah, you don't really have the option. Either you wipe all your data and start from scratch or you pay the decryption, you know, fee, fine, extortion racket, uh, and you get your stuff back, hopefully, right? Um, I mean, I would hope that they had insurance uh, because that sounds like a thing that they're they're big enough of a company that they absolutely should have insurance on this stuff. It's and that's unfortunately what what insurance is. It's to pay these ransomwares. I guess I haven't heard too many of these ransomware attacks, so I thought they were calming down. So, but who knows? It's it's just being quieted because companies are and insurance is is getting really good at handling this, and by handling it. They mean paying off the bad guys. Now, what this does and, and why why we don't recommend just paying the bounty uh, is that it incentivizes it, right? It's a really perverse incentive. So some guy locks up your files and says, hey, yeah, give me 10 bucks or they go away. And you're like, well, I need those files. So here's 10 bucks. Do you think that guy's going to stop? Do you think these hackers are actually going to stop writing malware and trying to infect big companies? No, they just got paid. They just made a ton of money off of Garmin saying, oh, well, I guess we got to pay this now. It's literally an extortion racket and people are making money. So what's to stop this, right? If if it's a valid revenue stream for bad actors, are they going to just say, oh, no, we don't really feel like doing that today? No, of course not. They're going to keep doing it and paying them off incentivizes this thing to keep happening. Now, the good thing is, is that now they know now... With some ransomware, the idea is they get the money and then they don't actually provide the decryption key as and they just steal, literally steal your money. But if insurance is going after them, you kind of want to be able to do it so you can keep on going after bad actors. Because if it's reported that you don't have the decryption key, nobody's going to pay. And clearly you're about the money. You're not about stealing people's files. You are clearly about the money. Yeah, a lot of these, a lot of these ransomware outfits actually hire support people to answer questions over chat. And, and they'll be like, yeah, here, we're going to decrypt like one or two files. Here you go. Just to prove to you that we can decrypt this stuff. Here's a couple of files. Like here's a couple of Excel documents, you know, verify them, check them against your records, make sure that it's, it all looks good there. And uh, yeah, then companies end up paying. I it's... mean, I wonder what's their health insurance like? Maybe they have good health insurance. <laughs> I, Oh, man. I mean, and it goes back to, I mean, what's the uh, theme here? So you have to cre uh, create a Bitcoin wallet and then you have to send them Bitcoin. It's it's this big to do. Hopefully the insurance companies are good about this and the insurance company knows how to set this up and do it. But it's one yeah. of those things. I, I kind of wonder, though, like if if the big wallets, it's, it's probably it probably makes money for these exchanges. Like if a large exchange says, yes, you know, X, Y, Z, you know, a crypto ransomware um, insurance company, you can use us to buy cryptocurrency and pay off these extortion people. And they make, you know, a cut off the top. That also incentivizes the, you know, big exchanges to kind of play along with the extortion racket. But if, let's say if all the big exchanges group together and they say, no, this is this is a uh, you know a, a plague on on the cryptocurrency ecosystem. We are not going to let you you know pay people through this medium because the only thing it does is encourage more extortion. That might be helpful to kind of curb this. It's not going to stamp it out completely, but it might at least alter the incentives a little bit. But honestly, I don't see that happening. Um, it's going to be think interesting. I just think that the, the technical support, like the help desk people of the ransomware will do it for you 
they'll say, okay, what do you, what do you want? So yes, it's the exchanges can band together to make a principal point, but I don't, I, I think that the, the tech support people are going to go, but it, what I wanted to say is, okay, so Garmin loses their customers data. I mean, for $10 million, all these companies should for GDPR have a download your data feature. So it should be, I mean, I almost want to say it's your data. It's on you to protect it almost to say, I don't know, right? To say, hey, we'll store it for you, but if something happens, like something happens, oh well. Yeah, if a company even began to to say something like oh. that without without like the express policy of, you know, hey, uh, listen, you're uploading stuff to us. Make sure you keep your own backups because anything could happen. Like that's one thing, but for a company to come at you with the expectation of, hey, you're the customer. We know you bought our fancy, you know, running trackers, bike trackers, exercise things. You know, our apps, our our services um in case it all blows up you're responsible and not us like that's that's a level of indemnification a bit too far i think never say never oh, never. oh no, no never say never <laughs> i i will not argue that i'm sure that happens um but it's it's kind of I mean, who's, who's mad, like what I don't understand who's mad at Garmin. I mean, I don't we feel bad for Garmin that no one's buying their GPSs anymore? Not really. I, I mean, no. so in at least in tech, and this is this is the way that I see it. And I've I've been part I've, I've been, uh, you know, an employee of companies that have been made obsolete. I've been an employee of companies that are on the cutting edge of innovation and everything in between, um, you know, in a capitalist society you innovate and you compete or you die right and and the fact that garmin didn't innovate well enough and that they're they're not nearly a household name anymore it seems fine to me like it just seems like business as usual like okay garmin's gonna go away one day that's okay I, it's not heartbreaking to me i i also owned a garmin gps I didn't really like the thing, but it got the job done. Uh, and then, you know, when when I got when I got this guy, yeah, any kind of smartphone with uh, Google Maps, I didn't need that anymore. It was always updated. I didn't have to pay for the updates. And I didn't have to have a weird box sitting on my car that people do break into cars to steal, or they did at one point in time. So what people don't know about Garmin is they they run the entire aviation and boating industry. So they're not really hurting that much for money. They got into the, hey, we made GPS. And then they would, we're going to license our maps. And if you know a fisherman, if you know people, yeah, it's Garmin's making bank that way. So I don't really feel bad on that side. And they said, let's get into wearables. And and I, I guess, I don't know. I, I see that Apple's coming out with their new watch that says that's going to do heart rhythms and everything else. I, I don't know why you wouldn't just buy an Apple watch and be done with it at this point, unless you absolutely do not want Apple. I don't know. And you, and if you don't want Google, Fitbit, Fitbit is now owned by Google, which means it's going to die soon. So I, I don't know. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I like for a wearable, honestly, like Google, Glass. Apple, Apple is not <laughs> Google glass. <laughs> Uh, Apple Apple is not a sponsor of the show, but this watch, I I'm gonna keep getting these. Like this one is gonna last, you know, great for another year or two strong. But when this thing goes, when the battery life gets too kind of eh, I'm gonna buy the next version. I'm I'm in their pocket, man. Like I've got the iPhone, I've got the watch, I've got AirPods. Like I went all in when moving away from the Google ecosystem, and I'm kind of enjoying life right now. It's it's technology that doesn't frustrate me on a day-to-day -day basis, which is kind of rare in my line of work. And before we jump into our main topic, with that said, Google just announced their Pixel 4a. Uh, I think it's 349. No, 449. Anyway, it's their budget phone that's not so budget. And again, if you don't want an Apple phone, which you should absolutely wait on until September, this is the phone to buy for right now. I, I don't think 5G is that impressive yet. Uh, and for, you need a phone, your phone breaks, you have a good option in the Pixel 4a. And I would just go with that and be happy. If you can wait and get an iPhone, that's that's probably my next phone. When September rolls around, they do their announcement, I'm probably buying whatever the iPhone, whatever 12 is. If you want to stick to the Android ecosystem, if you've got 
you know, a bunch of stuff tied up in that. If you just really hate Apple products, cool. That's fine. Don't buy the like cheapest thing your carrier offers. Just don't, don't, please. The Pixel line, if you're going to have an Android phone, the Pixel line is stellar. It's fantastic. They are, you know, for the most part, priced correctly, especially the, the cheaper A line. They're priced correctly. They get updates for a while. Not as long as an iPhone, but for an Android phone, excellent updates, good support. Um, and honestly, I've never hated any of my Pixel, Nexus, HTC One, like like the, the official Google Android phones. I've never hated them. I haven't particularly fallen in love with them, but for Android devices, they were rock solid. Um, yeah. I have, a, I have a Pixel 2, a Pixel 2 XL, and it's going to be, I'm finishing year three on it. And I, look, I'm privileged that I can just buy a phone whenever I feel like it. So I kept it for three years. I figured, you know what? It's time. They, so I'll probably get the next update and that's it. But I really, I've told you I got my iPad. I have my Mac. I'm really loving the whole synergy thing. So I might as well move to iMessage and be a blue bubble for some people <laughs> and, and and go from there. It's, it's I don't know. I was digging, I was cleaning my basement the other day and I found my Nexus Q. And I don't know what to do with it. I love the Nexus Q. I really do. That is, that hardware is just, I mean, it's not amazing anymore, but... It, when it came out, that thing was the coolest thing. It was literally a Chromecast, but you know, like the buggy the magic issues. April. Yeah, you know the buggy issues that people have with Chromecast all the time. It's a Chromecast, but it actually worked. It was yes. incredible, and it looked like this futuristic hi-fi piece of technology sitting in like the centerpiece of your living room. It wasn't like sequestered back to one of the like HDMI seven ports on the back of your TV and forgot about. Uh, Google really did some amazing industrial design stuff back in that time. Not so much anymore, but back in the day, yeah, that and Google Glass. Uh, and then I found my Google Glass and like the seven things of headphones or uh, eyeglasses that I had with it, but I'm sad. But Tom I've got that mine somewhere around here. So I don't know where it went, but I've got it somewhere. Anyway, and I thought that was the particularly right wearable because with your watch, you need two hands. You need your hand to hold it and you need your hand to touch it. So yeah, the glass was right there and it just wasn't ready. I mean, maybe in a, maybe in a year or two, it'd be the right thing. And I'm not going to go back and spend that money. Anyway, we've wasted too much time on all of this. <clears throat> I'm going to, let's talk about our main topic which is DEFCON is this week. We're recording on August 4th. DEFCON is Thursday, August 6th. DEFCON has encountered an illegal exception and needs to restart in safe mode. Yes. So obviously DEFCON is not in Las Vegas this year. They went all virtual because that's what everyone's doing right now. And how do you get a 30,000 person conference virtual? We're gonna find out, but it's on Discord. Their main their main uh, source is Discord. So I would start first with the website, defcon.org, go there. And the reason we're bringing this up, we do this every year, try to give you some heads up, is that usually DEFCON requires some expense. You have to get to Las Vegas, you need a hotel room, you gotta pay for the ticket. Here it's all virtual. So if you've never experienced DEFCON and you wanna give it a try, here you go. You can watch the live streams for, everything is free. Uh, I, they're, they're talking about some sort of $20 fee for some special stuff. I'm telling you, you don't need it. Uh, maybe you don't get to ask questions of the, of the talks, but again, who cares? So the, 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 the streams are free. You can watch it live. Um, yeah, Steph kind of always puts everything after, but anyway, it's there. I'm an organizer of the crypto village. So we have a really good lineup coming up. Everything, again, is going to be streamed on YouTube and Twitch. There is a DEF CON uh, Discord server you can go into. Uh, it's I'll, We'll link in the show notes there. But you just go. Uh, you can have fun. They have different contests. And contests are usually the, the, the fun part of DEF CON. So the fun part of DEF CON is always the seeing everyone you know and with any conference, seeing all you know, talking to people, and knowing that the, 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 the talks are streamed, that you don't have to rush to say, oh, I got to watch this. I'll get it instead of missing your friends. But it's clearly the contest. I saw, I got Tom interested in the blanket fort contest. Uh, you build your own blanket fort. 
you do uh you do a home and garden style tour and then you tweet them and the best one uh, i don't know what they win but they win something we better win a bigger blanket for it. That would be the only acceptable prize for me. Like if I submit my blanket for it, I want them to be like, like the HGTV show where they like flip a house and turn it around and be like, Hey, look, family, we know you were struggling. Here's this brand new property. Like I want them to send me a giant box full of like comforter sheets, pillows, blankets, tent poles, stakes. Like I want everything to make a blanket for mansion. That blanket for on that episode of community, that's what I want. That should be the prize. And if you've not seen Community, it is on Netflix. Go watch it. Community is excellent. It really Crypto, is. Vill Crypto Village is back. We have the gold bug puzzle. Uh, my friend Maya and Kevin have put together another awesome puzzle. Basically, it's there's a website. You do it. They're, they range from really easy to really hard. And... And so don't just say, oh, I'm not good at this. Try it. They're excellent creating puzzles. You never know. It wasn't like the hardest puzzle at DEF CON last year. So it's one of the, it's definitely doable. Um, hack a satellite. I guess that's the big one that everyone's looking forward to. Uh, the U.S. Air Force is putting up a satellite with allowing you to hack it. So that's kind that's, of cool. That's really neat. That is really neat. Um, the DEFCON scavenger hunt is is always a fun time. It's it's not safe for work. I'm just going to give you that heads up. But it's all virtual now. So instead of flying to Vegas and doing it, so they knowing that it's not going to be as easy as you think. So I'm just giving you that that heads up. I'm trying to find other stuff. Then they have the other the the packet captures and. And all the other things, uh, darknet, the darknet contest. That's always fun. It's a, it's a, I, I can't pronounce this. M multi massively multiplayer online role playing game. If you want to do that, so they have that. I would start defcon.org. The link is right at the top for the Discord server, discord.gg/defcon. Go in there. I was trying, it, it is not easy to set up. So just take your time. You have to talk to the bot. You have to agree to certain things. You have to go to the recapture site and then he, just trying to get Tom in. Then you don't see all the channels, but by the time you hear this, all the channels will be live. You can talk there. You can see the schedules. Each village is doing something a little different. So you just have to be aware, but we've all mainly focused on being on Twitch and YouTube for the live stream. So get the schedules that you want to see. Uh, look at the DEF CON schedules and enjoy, I guess, this weekend. that That's the big thing. Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm really looking forward to some of these talks. This is going to be really neat. Um, I think Discord's an interesting platform for DEF CON for several reasons. Um, but I, I am looking forward to, like, Twitch chat on, on popular channels is always, I, I almost said kind of, it's always a garbage fire. Like, literal just dumpster fire everywhere i cannot wait for defcon twitch chat that is going to be just an absolute riot um i'm, I'm looking forward to it it's i'm sure they're they're moderated up the wazoo it's again because defcon brings out remember you're trying to secure this because that's going to be the holy grail to try and take down uh twitch or whatever it is so people are going to try and do it so they're trying to moderate against that uh we don't know how it's going to work it's this this is going to be a test i would focus i mean if you don't want to get join the discord or the twitch just wait for the wait for the youtube uh things to populate since everyone's doing it recording it themselves and everything else it shouldn't take that long and again, it's free. And, and I urge you, if you enjoy yourself, you're having fun, you enjoy what you're seeing, hopefully next year, I'd say come out and, and see everyone. Unfortunately, DerbyCon Derby Con knew something. I don't know why they ended, but they knew something. I, who knows? I don't know who's good. But one thing, uh, one thing to keep in mind, though, is that even though you're, you're at home, you know, you're, you're sitting in your comfy chair, you're at your desk, you've got your, your hard drive caddy behind you, when you join the DEF CON Discord server or the DEF CON Twitch chat, you're at DEF CON. So don't just click on every link that <laughs> happens to pop up. It's still DEF CON, people. Like you, like, you might not have to worry about securing your devices 
as much. Like you might not like unplug your Wi-Fi from from your house or or anything like that, or, or shut off your networks on your phone. But when it comes to clicking links on a random server populated by hackers, don't. Just small word of advice. Just just don't. And if you're interested. If you find the the election uh, hacking village particularly interesting or the crypto and privacy and you want to get there, ask how to help. We're always looking for volunteers. People are always looking for how to help and everything else. And and you can be there next year. You can you can be remote, whatever it is, and we'll go from there. Anyway, that's our time. Magically, just under 30 minutes. We're, we're on time today. This is so weird. Yeah. We're going to have to do everything online. That's look, I'm I'm sad that that's what it's looking like. Yeah. Who knows what's This is not going away anytime soon, but anyway. Okay, we're done. We will see everyone hopefully next week. Bye everyone. See ya. Good. One. I forgot what number it was.